Freedom of Expression and Related Human Rights Concerns in 2018. Freedom of expression is about the right of individuals and organizations to seek information, receive it, and be an audience for the exchange of information, ideas, and opinions. Well, the freedom of expression as a term, I think, is what is easier to define. Is uh, the latitude one person is given, or people are given, to express to communicate their ideas, their beliefs, and their knowledge. That is what is freedom of expression. However, it is very important to note uh, that there's an ethos to freedom of expression. That we all have the right to express what we think. But what we say about others have to be governed by rules. Uh, to me, freedom of expression uh, is having that liberty to speak or to talk my mind without you know, invading privacy and also maybe security, compromising security uh, matters of the nation. This right allows individuals and institutions the right to freely communicate opinions, ideas, and share information in whatever form within the limits of the law. Freedom of expression can take the form of words, pictures, and sounds communicated through various channels including printed material, films, cartoons, radio, television, and social media. When the Christian missionaries first came and there was a newsletter by the Church Missionary Society, and then we moved on to colonial government, which monopolized the airwaves and the press. You came to the 60s and 70s and 80s, it was totally monopolized. The press, especially in media, was monopolized by government. Today, it is monopolized by the private citizen. You have over 300 radio stations. You have over 60 publications. You have digital platforms, all talking, all saying things. And if anybody says there's no freedom of the press or media, they would not be talking from empirical evidence, which I'm giving you now. The human rights concerns on freedom of expression. Cyberbullying. The internet has promoted cyberbullying or harassment. Some forms of cyberbullying are dehumanizing. They lead to low self-esteem and a variety of other emotional responses, including being scared, frustrated, angry, or depressed. Social media attacks and the vulnerability of youths and PWDs. In June 2018, government took a decision to impose a social media over-the-top tax of Uganda shillings 200 shillings a day on the use of social media. Why do we pay tax? Tax is paid for the development purpose of the country. It is utilized for all of us. We all use these platforms. These platforms are an economic resource. They are an economic resource. If you're on Facebook, you see adverts. If you are on WhatsApp, people send you their, their, their information. If you are on Instagram, whatever it is, there are either platforms where people use and do economic activity. I think it is not a problem to, to, to tax it, but also if the question is strictly about what's the relevance, it's the relevance of tax vis-a-vis -vis governance and society's development. OTT, well, the government collects tax. That is the only relevance. They get taxes. But while they get, they get taxes, OTT you know, hinders innovation. It hinders innovation and creativity. Because most of the youth, Uganda is, has the biggest percentage of young people, I think. Uh, is one of the countries that w with biggest percentage of youths and young people. And these young people are always or online, I would say online or on the internet. They are trying to find out this and this. How do I create this app? How do I do this? Now, with OTT, uh, it might seem not to be too expensive, but it is expensive because somebody who would have done it for free or free of charge is limited. Given the fact that the majority of the youth are unemployed and 43.6% of the PWDs are living in poverty, the introduction of OTT significantly affected the internet access by the youth and PWDs, particularly persons with visual and hearing impairments. 
falsehoods and fake news on social media. Social media presented an opportunity to share and exchange information in real time. However, it has been turned into a source of fake news. Almost on a daily basis, many subscribers to the various social media platforms receive and share fake news without verifying the authenticity of the content. Institutional Challenges of Regulation The regulatory bodies, including UCC, the Uganda Media Council and Broadcasting Council, have formal overlapping mandates to control, monitor and discipline or sanction journalists and media houses. Limitations that we have, in my view, are the ones which are regulatory. Because, as the, our constitution tells you, you have freedom of expression, but all freedoms and human and rights have limitations, and the limitations are what I told you earlier around the ethos of uh, freedom of expression. You are free to think anything, but when you begin to express yourself about others and about things, you have got to be regulated. Why do we regulate? We regulate because we need to maintain public order and we need to protect individuals and sexual interests. We have on various occasions witnessed tension in and outside Kampala, stemming from political and other activities regarding freedom of expression. When we are gathering news, we are, our rights are crippled. They, we are beaten, we are battered, we are assaulted by mostly security officers, uh, government officials, uh, and then the public at times stands against us. As the, our constitution tells you, you have freedom of expression, but all freedoms and human and rights have limitations. And the limitations are what I told you earlier around the ethos of uh, freedom of expression. You are free to think anything. But when you begin to express yourself about others and about things, you have got to be regulated. Why do we regulate? We regulate because we need to maintain public order and we need to protect individuals and sexual interests. Infringement on media freedoms. Violence against journalists remained a serious threat for journalists reporting on political issues and social problems, for example, drug trafficking and corruption, or voicing criticism against government. Last time they, they stopped uh, one of the events, and they said they didn't have the manpower to, you know, to give security to the, to the, to the meeting that was going to happen. And, you know, the, the number of police officers that were at the venue were enough to provide security for it. So I see, I see this as, uh, as excuses to cripple media freedom.